If you look at tree ring data in this state, it goes back about 2,000 years. There have been a couple of 50-year droughts and even a 200-year drought in the history of this state. Now, if one of these type droughts occurs again, we don't have enough water in this state. We're going to be totally out. There's nothing we can do about it. Given the issues with water shortages, and we could talk about other things like climate change, overpopulation, this is arguably one of the most important times in human history regarding how we can affect the future. Our choices affect others, right? And our choices sometimes benefit others and they harm others. Uh, but I think that people do have a motivation to care about the future and the, and the generations and the generations to come. What if we shouldn't bring them into existence? That is to say, the very first assumption that Wade made, there will be future people, we really ought to question that assumption. What if that's our obligation to future generations, to prevent them from coming to be? We seem to have reasons to have children, but those reasons are all self-oriented reasons. People want the experience of parenting, they want to have an influence on a future generation, they want to have security in their old age. Uh, but we don't, in ordinary life, actually think that you're improving someone's life by conceiving and giving birth to him or her. So it seems that our reasons to have children are self-oriented, not oriented toward the children. And finally, if we owe it to future generations not to conceive them, then every question about optimal population growth or size or limits are answered at a stroke. Right? We wouldn't need to figure out what is the carrying capacity of the Earth, how many people should there be, because the answer would be zero. It is a pretty crazy idea. Um, I don't think that anyone should accept this conclusion based on any of the arguments that we've given so far for it. This is the sort of thing where it's an interesting proposal. There's nothing obviously wrong with the arguments, but we need to sift through these and, and, and think about them an awful lot before we're going to be able to come to some kind of conclusion. My idea is to try to expand our, our moral discussion to talk about beings that will be affected by, by our choices today, and, and arguably they will be harmed by our choices today. So if, if they are born into a world in which is polluted, or in, in which they don't have access to clean water, or they can't breathe, we possibly could be violating their rights to normal functioning. Future generations might feel wronged by our cur current actions. They, they would feel like it's uh, taxation without representation. It's not impossible that people should not have children. It's just impossible, I think, in the real world that all seven billion of us would all agree to stop having children. But setting that aside, even if we assume that this view is not true, and probably it isn't, any kind of a new perspective to jar people out of their habits is going to prompt people toward better thinking, whether they end up with the truth or not. At least they'll have been thinking about it in a serious and human way. The Department of Philosophy, Religion, and Humanities hosts two forums each semester. At these events, we explore big questions with students, faculty, and the Austin community. And they are free and open to the public. Check out our calendar and our course offerings on our webpage.